you know, I've waited long enough, and now I'm gonna come out and say it. I like Masterpiece Starscream. Not to be confused with Masterpiece Starscream, of course. Or Masterpiece Starscream. And yes, also Masterpiece Starscream. No, of course, here I am making reference to the much maligned and underappreciated Masterpiece Starscream. And to be uber specific, to the point of ridiculousness, the Walmart exclusive version released in the Classics line. Yep, this blast from the past is the first stab at a big old Starscream that's not for kids, man. It's an adult collector's item. <clears throat> I really like him. He's seriously flawed, but he's still charming and fun. It's near the exact same vibe as the other Classics figures that came out in the same line. The same old classic G1 characters, slightly reimagined, but still obviously recognizable, with a lot of real-world detail added. And for me, that's where this figure really excels. We'll get into that especially later with the alt mode, just you wait. I really love the robot mode still, at least looks-wise. Straight off the bat, let's get into the worst part of the figure. His nipples aren't painted. No, I'm just kidding, that's fine, real nipples aren't painted either. The articulation is pretty rough, though. The arms are fine, legs are really where there's problems. They just can't do that much, and unfortunately it's due to the giant hunks of kibble attached like samurai swords to his hip. Now, that is exactly what they are referencing. These are designed to resemble the sheath of a sword, and I love that. They're a design element that looks swish, and also points back to the fact that this is a robot that does transform. There is no magically disappearing kibble. But... On Starscream here, it is also a hindrance, unfortunately, because it's the main thing keeping the leg from being able to swing out. The joints are all there, but there's just this guff in the way blocking it. We'll get over it, though. Here's some amazing details. First, fully articulated hands. Great stuff. Notice that they have been customized to be a lighter shade of blue, and cry about it, because it's my toy and I can do what I want. Previously shown, but the chesticles do in fact open, and there's some missile pods in there. Another great touch is these working pistons around the back of his elbows. The null rays are just attached on 5mm ports, so there's backwards compatibility with basically everything now. And there's a pretty cool face swapping gimmick. Slide his little pout down, flip it around, shove that back in, and now you've got that cheeky little grin. Thundercracker here also comes with a base in case you forget his name, and... Uh, Oh, what? Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, no, sorry, Starscream, Starscream's got his, he has his name on the base. There's a stand that his rear pegs into, and also this little man included, so that your action figure can also have an action figure. Listen, you little snot goblins, I know the guy's name is Dr. Arkaville, but there's cool people here, and I don't want them to know that I know, because then they'll think I'm a nerd. The transformation is interesting because it's basically just the usual seeker wham bam shang a lang where you pull the cockpit through and compress the arms in, but there's also a lot more going on here. The feet fold up so cleanly that you'd never know they were there, as well as some weirdness with exactly how the torso moves around. It's not all good, it's not all bad, it's definitely interesting. And jet mode is exactly what I think I want when it comes to an alt mode on a transformer. If not for the obvious Decepticon iconography, I think this would be indistinguishable from a scale model of an F-15 Eagle. It just cleans up that nicely. Like, even from all angles, the hands are about the only thing that kind of looks out of place. And if you have a problem with that, then you're just deliberately searching for an issue. The stand can be readjusted, and now it holds the jet and the null rays. The null rays swap out for the Sidewinder missiles, and he just looks so perfect. If you thought the robot mode had a lot of features, get ready, because the jet is nothing if not insanely detailed. First, there's the retractable landing gear, which barely rolls, but it's still really great. Then the nose can swing open to reveal the radar. If you ever actually displayed this toy on your shelf with the radar open, it means you're a psychopath, but it's still a really cool touch. Next, there's the opening cockpit with a seat for the doctor and a space to put a cyber beer. Something, I don't care. All the ailerons can actually move, and there's also air brakes included as well. Flipping these up reveals even more sculpted details and even another piston. And in this mode, it really just stands out even more how nice this thing feels to hold. It's dense and clicky in the right way, and the plastic just feels great. 
There's also so much die cast scattered around, mainly in the internal structure, and it adds to the weight and heft. There was just clearly so much love put into this toy, and it really sings. Or should I say, screams. Okay, I'll see myself out, guys.